Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis, updated commodities, work our way through the dollar yields, precious metals and commodities ETFs that I follow. Uh, if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com. That's where I dive deeper into all of these topics, looking for potential investment opportunities. Uh, and I don't just look for regular stuff, guys. I'm not throwing out ETFs. Uh, I'm throwing out what I think are the best opportunities in the markets uh, that I can find. And I scan everything. I, I read reports. I look at uh, quarterly earnings and all that stuff. Uh, and then I also dive and I look at fractals and fractal analysis uh, with technical analysis. And I think what I find are some of the most highly leveraged opportunities in the market that I can find. Uh, and that's where I diversify out. Uh, we still have a coupon code Mayday that is active. Uh, and you can see my portfolio on the website. You can see all those ones that I think are highly leveraged to the price of gold, silver, oil, whatever it is. Uh, so let's dive in there. Let's take a look, see what's going on today. Uh, we've got the DXY. And what do we have here, boys? A big bearish engulfing today. What does that mean? It means that we could potentially head lower again, that this could be uh, a... Uh, continuation pattern, a flag pattern that we could dive lower again. Now, if we get follow through on this, which I think is likely, we could come back down to much lower levels. Why is this important? Why do I care about the DXY? Because the things that you guys are looking at are priced in dollars. And if the dollar's dropping in relative strength against other currencies, it's going to cause a rotation of money in the markets a little bit different than what we've seen. The difference between this move and this move uh, is a big difference. We're going to see commodities go up, precious metals go up, and the dollar falls. Emerging markets will go up. And this might be more dollar-denominated assets uh, kind of at the beginning of this. We'll call it the beginning of the bull market uh, all through here of commodities. The two-year yield is up today, 0.4%, uh, and it still looks a little bit weak. I don't see a huge reversal candlestick, no big green army or anything. So momentum is still to the downside. I think that's the case. Uh, U.S. 10-year yield, it's trying to get a little bit of a bounce, not a huge bounce. Uh, this can go in either direction here. We do have a, a kind of the first leg. We do have a second here, uh, but we don't see a big bounce. So I would say right now the momentum is still to the downside, but we got to see a bounce for me to change my mind. And my mind can change immediately in the short term. I am free to change my mind whenever I like, as fast as I want in the short term. Longer term, we're going lower. We're going lower, and that's how I'm positioned. And then the 30-year, it's up 0.76%, uh, but the momentum is still to the downside. I don't see a convincing bounce yet, uh, although it could come uh, next trading session. Uh, TYX, TNX ratio, we are holding flat today. Flat. So we didn't get too much of an uninversion or an inversion of the yield curve uh, when comparing the 30 and the 10. They're basically flat to each other. Uh, and we are starting to slowly come on up, which is good for our precious metals. We, at the website, positioned down here. We were picking off our favorite companies, buying the gold and silver mining companies uh, in these areas over here. And I purchased what I think is pretty dang close to the bottom for a lot of good stuff. And we have insane moves today, is what I'll say, coming off these bottoms there. Uh, TLT bond prices down half a percent, uh, which uh, yields going up. Obviously, bond prices are going to go down. Uh, here we are today. But overall, I think they will go up with yields pulling on back. Now, this isn't an end-of-trend move. This is not an end-of-trend move, guys. This is a, a trade at best, uh, and I think it will roll back over at some point in the future, whenever that is. We've got the 2 and 10, uh, which uninverted a little bit today. Uh, it does look a little bit weak still. Uh, the way I gauge that is you see these big selling pressure candlesticks and see the small bounces up in it. Uh, those are all bearish flag patterns. Uh, they stick out like a sore thumb when you uh, get trained to look at them. Uh, so I still think that this is a bearish flag pattern. And I think we could go lower. 
And the uninversion of the yield curve generally occurs when a slowdown comes into the markets. Uh, we've got gold up 43 bucks, breaking through resistance. Is this a big deal? Yes, it's a very big deal. And yes, I've been saying this is going to continue to go up and up and up and up and up. And it's going to accelerate potentially here to the upside. Could we get a bloody nose next trading session? We could. We could. Doesn't mean we go straight up. Just means that up is the preferred direction here. We need to be bullish. Silver, oh, whoa, 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 hi, ho, oh, silver. Yes, look at what we see here, boys. Breaky, breaky, there we go. That is what I was looking for. Now, here's the thing on silver. Um, if you take a little bit longer view, we've broken out of this pattern here to the upside. That is number one. Then we get a consolidation pullback, number two. That's where it ended. It's fly time, boys. It's fly time. Now, this isn't your normal fly. This isn't, oh, we broke a downtrend line on a small little pattern. This flag pattern, huge. Another thing, we need to take the big picture into account. The big picture into account is the 45-year flat, 45-year uh, cup and handle pattern and the flag that we're breaking on the, the handle. Guys, this is, this is, you don't get this very often. Uh, the, the people who are very, you know, older, you know, 70s, 80s, they lived through this bull market and were probably at an age that can maybe take advantage of it. Um, what is coming is that same move. And I, I don't want anybody, you know, I, I care about a lot of my listeners. I want them to prosper. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to grab it. So this is going to look something on the lines of this. Um, that's what's going to occur. Do you see that? Uh, and I'm probably sharing too much because my members do not like me sharing stuff. Uh, that is what I think is going to happen. The projected move is 350. The fractal size, if I were to line this up, goes to $800. Now, I don't know if it's going to go to that uh, amount. All I can say is this is a damn good alignment. And we've got all the tailwinds for this to happen. If you want to know the companies that I, that I have, the ones that went up 20% today, today, yes, today, sign up to the, to the website. Use the Mayday coupon code, find what I'm in, and just ride the damn bull market. Uh, I can help you ride this bull market. I can help you when you get off. That's what I'll say there. But this is something that you don't want to mess around with. It is a huge opportunity. And we've been talking about gold and silver stocks for the past six months, more than that, probably the last year. Uh, and we've really, I think, nailed down the entry points here. Uh, and there are still some that are down with really good entry points here. Don't let that get by you. Uh, platinum, another one that I am incredibly bullish on uh, is platinum. The reason is we've got this, the chart set up and here we are with the dollar weakening. That is the key driver. And this is starting to put in a larger candlestick here. So we're starting to get some, some upside momentum here. We could see a, a race here between platinum and silver. Silver will probably win in the short term uh, with the market conditions and the uninversion of the yield curve. But platinum is awakening and platinum is also correlated to other sectors. This is big here. It's a big deal because commodities, when this goes, I think commodities are ready to RIP rip it. Uh, palladium up 4.8%. That's bouncing pretty good. Probably getting a short squeeze here. Getting a little shorty shorty here. Uh, so that looks really good. We've got GDX up 4.8. That looks good already, though. We should have already be in this riding it together like we are. And then we've got GDXJ, which is breaking through that big resistance line. What does that mean? When this resistance line releases, boom, boom, B-O-O-M. Doesn't mean every day. It means that we are in an uptrend. Stage two engaged. This is stage one. Stage four decline, stage two is where we're going. So this has a long, long runway ahead of it. We've got SILJ, which is even further back than this. Uh, and this thing, guys, huge opportunity. We should be looking at silver junior mining companies. Oh, wait, I already did. And we purchased them down here and here and here and all around here, <laughs> waiting for this big move uh, to materialize. 
Uh, XAU to goal ratio of 3.5%. We are coming from no man's land. This is your opportunity right here. We've got crude oil up 2.82%. Is this a bottom? I don't know. Uh, I've been looking at this. We've got an inversion of the yield curve. That usually, you know, a slowdown in the market doesn't usually mean a good thing for oil. But oil is an inflation-sensitive asset. So is our boy platinum up there that's about to break out. Crude oil and inflation go hand in hand. If we go into stagflation, what will win? The slowdown or the move uh, higher for oil because of the inflationary pressures? Good question. Don't know yet. I'm watching this. I'm watching it, trying to see if the slow, how big the slowdown is and what this could potentially look like. Everyone and their mom is in the camp that this is going to continue to fall to some really low level. And that very well could be a possibility. It could end up that way, but I'm going to watch it and see. Uh, TTF net gas down 2.5% uh, today. Uh, we're right on support. We've got lots of support through this section there. Uh, we've got natural gas in America bouncing upwards from a double bottom uh, upwards. So that is looking good to maybe continue higher here in the short term. We've got our boy XOP. Yeah, you know me. It is just trading sideways. Do we have further downside? Could this drop? It could. It could, but it could also be a false breakdown where everybody gets bearish. They all think it's going to go to $40. They throw on their shorts. And then when this goes up, they all get squeezed and then cry about uh, that a recession oil doesn't go up in. Uh, I'm getting prepared. I'm getting prepared for a potential turn and a potential squeeze that's going to squeeze all the knuckleheads trying to squeeze in an inflationary environment. We'll see what happens. OIH is in a similar situation. Uh, we're up a little bit today, but the momentum is still to the downside. I'm watching, 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 watching for potential entry points if this decides to go up. And I know the hurricane's coming, and it could, we could go up and then come back down, uh, which is possible. But we'll be, I'll be watching. We've got Newcastle coal futures, a little bit of a selling pressure day with the big wick at the bottom. Sometimes that's a reversal candlestick. I think we'll go sideways with the option of going higher. Uh, we're basing out, which is a good thing, and usually you base before you space or go high into space. Uh, we've got the Sprofus Uranium Trust uh, just moving sideways. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, we do have, I can throw a trend on here that we would like to break, that we are trying to break out of here. I'll leave that on there. So we've got kind of a falling wedge going on. And hopefully we can break to the upside of that. Uh, uranium futures pricing up 0.76. Uh, are we going to get moving here to the upside? Are all of those bearish retail people fighting on Twitter? Do you think they're wrong? Yeah, probably. And I just have to do something like this to kind of extend it. It's right in the tip there. Uh, we've got URA up a little bit, 1.85. Not too bad. It's, it's holding. We've got URNM up a little bit and URNJ. Could this be a double bottom? It, it could. Um, we do have that uninversion of the yield curve and a potential slowdown that, that people are worrying about. Uh, that's what makes this a little bit more iffy. I'd like to see some more buying pressure. Uh, and that doesn't, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, we need to break like 700 trend lines before somebody gets bullish. Um, I'm not that, I'm not that camp. Um, I would have fired away down here if I wanted uranium, but um, I was too preoccupied with the gold and silver space. Looking at uh, copper, copper's up 1.63%. Uh, we could throw a trend line on this too. Uh, that is broken. And things are starting to look more bullish as we go on. And we could get a retest here, guys. So don't, don't get too, too bullish. We could come back a little bit, get a retest. That would be your entry point. Uh, we've got COPX up 3%. That looks pretty good. I like it down here a lot is what I'll say. Uh, iron ore down just a little bit. Still looks okay. It looks like it's trying to base out. No big selling pressure. Uh, if this was going to sell off, we would have gotten a big fat candlestick. A big fat red candlestick will show up if we're going to go lower. I'll put it that way. Aluminum up 1.5%. Uh, not too bad. It's fighting. And we're, we've been kind of moving back and forth here, consolidating. Uh, nickel uh, sideways. Um, not really too fond of nickel at this exact moment. We need some more green army candlesticks. 
Uh, Moo uh, bouncing off to pork here, and that does look good. We got a bullish engulfing today, and that does look good to go higher. Um, and yes, uh, this looks really good, really, really good. Uh, so you guys know the companies I like in the fertilizers and the uh, companies. So you guys know what I like if you want to be looking. Uh, emerging markets up 0.83%, looking good. Uh, that dollar dropping is going to be a good tailwind behind this thing. It's going to launch. We've got KRE up 0.4%, looking okay. Um, a little still drifting a little bit, not too much big buying pressure yet. Uh, TAN down 1.1%, but still looks good to go higher. Uh, it's just a little bloody nose. We've got lithium down just a little bit. And this could be a turning point here, guys. Uh, if we break this guy here, we could be seeing a bottoming process. Uh, I said we get down to the 36th level-ish in this range. Uh, we did that. We're on support. Uh, and maybe, we, maybe if you guys want to, we can start looking at potential um, investment opportunities in lithium if you guys like. Uh, and and we, can, we can rip up the lithium market too if you guys want to. Uh, RMX 0.2% up. Uh, again, I'd like to see a higher high. We haven't had that yet. Uh, Baltic Dry Index up 1.1%. That still looks pretty good to continue higher. We've got XHB up 2%. Wait a minute. I thought we were in a housing crash. Why is this remaining resilient? Why doesn't this stupid thing fall? Probably because we're in an expansionary phase and interest rates have been falling. And what I'm looking for is a move higher. Yes, higher, higher, higher. We've got Russell 2000 up uh, against support resistance. We've got uh, the S&P 500 up 0.75, the plunge protection team doing its job. We've got NASDAQ up 1%, plunge protection team doing it. They got to get out there and buy these shares up. Got to increase those deficits. SMCI down a little bit, but still looks kind of ugly for a move lower. Uh, NVIDIA up 1.9%. They got to buy this because... You can't hold the NASDAQ up without entering that. Uh, but these do look pretty crappy, to be honest, guys. Uh, kind of a double top going on. BTC up 1.33%. It's holding in there. It's a bullish formation at, the, at this time. Uh, and then we've got Ethereum also uh, up just a little bit, 0.5%. Still looks a little bit weak. You can see the big selling pressure, the um, move higher selling pressure. There's no real you know, big move higher yet. Uh, so it's still stair-stepping lower. And we could easily come out of this pattern uh, if we lose the NASDAQ and stuff. Uh, but right now, it's holding on. So uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you guys like. We've got a question and answer session coming up this uh, weekend, Saturday, 7 a.m. Uh, you can ask me whatever you want. You want to come on there, ask me, you know, what about this one company? Uh, I'll share the companies that I like. And I've kind of fine tooth combed through a whole bunch of companies. Uh, I found the ones that I like. And, and those are the ones that have what I think are the most leveraged to the potential upside in gold and silver. They're highly leveraged companies. Uh, they are a little bit of a pain to, uh, to ride because they're volatile. But uh, some of them, they went up quite a bit today. Uh, some of them, uh, one of them went up uh, over 20, it was 25% roughly uh, today. One was 25%, the others between 10 and 15% were the majority of them. Uh, so decent day on the, the gold and silver front. Uh, and I'm still looking, remember the remember this, gold leads. Gold's breaking out, gold leads. The other commodity sectors follow. And they usually follow with, with a lag. Uh, gold started taking off in uh, October of 2022. Uh, there's usually a six to 18 month lag, depending on what commodity you're looking at. Uh, and you really want to see when it really starts to take off. Uh, so I think potentially gold going up could, could engage quite a bit of other commodity sectors. So there's a lot of good patterns in other sectors too. Uh, falling wedges that have broken out and they're consolidating sideways, much like some of the gold and silver companies did for a little while too. But that's what I've got for today. We'll catch you Saturday if you're part of the, the, the group there. Uh, and that's all I've got. So we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.